Before I get on with today's video, I want to give a quick mention to Invert Shows UK and the very fast approaching Western Invert Show. Uh, this show will be on Sunday the 22nd of July at Thornberry Leisure Centre, which is in Bristol. Uh, it's £5 for adults, £2 for children, and doors open at 11, close at 4pm, so it's a 5 hours show. And of course at this show there will be loads of inverts for sale, different uh, livestock traders, there will be equipment for sale, and of course, one thing that inverse shows do that's different to any other show, they have actual animal shows there, so there's birds of prey, there's the uh, bug fest uh, show which is fantastic, I enjoyed that at the uh, Northern show. I of course will be there filming this show and if you are interested in coming along please uh, check out the information here to come along and also in the description, at the very top of the description there will be a link to their Facebook page. So please go and check them out and uh, hopefully I will see you at the Western show in July. Hello everyone, Tarantula Dan here, I hope you're all doing well today. So in this video I'm going to be talking about my two Typho Chilena Celadonia, the Brazilian jeweled Tarantula. Now, I'm doing this video because a lot of you have been asking me how my Celadonia is doing. Is it alive and well? Has it died? Is it feeding? Has it molted? What's the enclosure like? Um, yeah, a lot of things to do with that one. Not only that, of course, at the BTS, which was back on the 20th of May, I did pick up my second one. So uh, yeah, one wasn't enough for me. Uh, I wanted to get a second one. I want to breed them in the future. And so I did pick up a second one. And a lot of people, A, uh, wanted to know how that one is doing, like the first one. But a lot of people genuinely, I don't think, believe that I have two of them. Um, they sort of said, well, we haven't seen any pictures of it. We haven't seen them together. You know, the usual things that people say um, in regards to something that's sort of so hard to come by and so expensive. So I thought in this video, I would give you an update on both of them, show them off and tell you what's been going on with them, I guess. So I do know that there's quite a few other people that are now getting these spiders. Of course, Petco from the Dark Den uh, got his I think like a day or two before I went down to him and met him in Budapest and uh, I know his is doing really really well. The smaller one that I have is actually a sibling of his, they are from the same egg sac so that's pretty awesome that I have a spider that's a sibling to his which is so far away, I think that's, that's pretty cool. Before I begin the video I'd like to just ask that if you do enjoy this video please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss my future uploads, uh, that really does help me out. Of course give me a like and a comment let me know what you think if you would like to support me in my channel there is a patron and also i have a peer box so you can send me things all information can be found in the description to this video without further ado let's uh, get these spotters done so then i have my two t celadonia here there's one in the glass tank and one in this tank we'll be taking a look at both in just a minute so before I get into that I want to tell you a little bit about what's been happening with them so since my last T Celadonia malt they have both malted which is fantastic they are getting bigger uh, they've both been eating well so there weren't any really feeding footage in this video which is a shame I fed uh, my larger T Celadonia um, about four days ago took down a mealworm not a problem which was great and uh, the second one has actually uh, molted and has been had a couple of fruit, uh, little fruit flies so again uh, neither of them are hungry at the moment so I'll include them in a future feeding video one thing I would like to share with you about both of these is as I said they have both molted and I believe I've been able to sex them so I have here a slide and it's not a very good conditioned one uh, when I got the malt this is off the second one um, it was kind of chewed up quite badly but I believe I've managed to have a look at it under a microscope and sex it now you will either see this as a good thing or a bad thing depending on who you are I mean let's face it having one of these is great having two is even better the first one I had which I've actually named Majora uh, after Majora's mask you know the colors and things um, She's a female. Yeah, I knew that a while ago. That's fantastic. I'm really, really happy with that. I bought this one as a male, and my plan was actually to call this one Petco. 
I thought that'd be pretty cool having again with the whole um, the, the, the spider siblings. I thought it'd be that's like a connection to Petco, and I thought it'd be cool to have have this one called Petco kind of thing. Um, however, this is the mold from this spider. It's also a female. So uh, yeah, whether however you see that, it's either a really good. I have two females of T. Celadonia. It's fantastic, you know. At the same time, it now means that I need to either try and buy another one to try and get a male, which sounds really weird that I'm trying to get a male of this species, um, or I have to find someone in the UK that will have a male and they are willing to do 50-50 or sell. So uh, this is, I mean, I've got plenty of time with this. Obviously they're females, they've got a long life ahead of them, hopefully. Um, but I'm trying to sort of get things, I'm trying to get it planned now, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, two female T. Sodonia, which is fantastic <laughs> in one sense. Um, I'm mean, very lucky to have two females, it's just an absolute pain. So, but with that said, um, I decided to name this one as well. I don't normally name tarantulas, I'm one of these people, I, I know this sounds really hypocritical, I think that naming tarantulas is a little bit stupid, <laughs> you know? Um, Tarantulas do not come when called, they do not get affectionate, they do not learn to know or understand their owners or their keepers. Tarantulas merely exist in their enclosures, eat, drink water, and breed and molt and die. You know, that's it in a sense, you know, they don't, you know, my spiders do not look at me through the glass and go, oh, Dan's coming with food. None of that, you know, they don't have the brain power to do that. Um, but with that said, there are of course of special spiders in my collection that do get named, of course. A good example is Zelda, my lassie dog, Power High Banner. She's special to me, she gets named. Uh, the, the, the whole naming of tarantula for me is just when they are special tarantulas that people want to know. Like, if I do a video and I say Zelda, people straight away know that's a spider that I'm talking about. And so, with these spiders, they get the same treatment. So I have my female Majora, which is my She's about a year and a half, two years old now. I've had her for a year and a half, so. Um, I don't know how old she was when I had her, but she was only tiny, so. Say, let's just, let's just say, you know, a year and a half. Um, so, of course, I have Majora, my oldest 80 month to two years old, um, T. Sardonia. And then I have this one, which is my new one, and she's called Maya. I called her Maya after Petco's girlfriend who very kindly did me a wonderful goodie bag, which I haven't done my uh, my Budapest Croatia travel video yet. It will be up at some point and hopefully you will all enjoy it. But Petco's partner, his girlfriend was, she's a wonderful, wonderful lady. Um, and I thought I would name it after her. So I could name it after Petco because it's a female. I, I don't know how we take that. So um, yeah, this one, when I, when I mentioned Maya in a video, I'm talking about the youngest one. So um, yeah, with the talk over, I think we should have a look at them and see how they are doing. So this is the first one. This is Majora. And uh, she still hasn't used any of the hides I have actually made for her in this enclosure, as you can see. I've got this enclosure set up lovely, thinking that she'd web up and, you know, make a nice sort of burrow in, uh, in that little sort of hide at the back. And she doesn't do that. She actually just constructs her little dens up along the top ledge which for me is a bit frustrating, but at the same time, um, it is up to her at the end of the day. And this is actually how I feed her. Uh, I crush the head uh, and like really crush it so that it cannot uh, hurt this spider at all. I don't want this spider getting eaten by uh, by food, especially after the whole thing with the last video of the Gramosola uh, poultry. So I crush the heads on the prey and then simply place them up here near her and usually she will take them down. I don't think she will too fair because she has actually eaten one of these fairly recently but um, she'll probably have it maybe a little bit later on 
it's quite a big meal for her, but uh, as I say, pros is no harm to her. So, uh, but that's the first one. You can see she is doing really, really well. Uh, I absolutely just love these. Uh, the colours of them are just, they're just fantastic. They really are. I didn't think she would have took, taken that one down, to be fair. I say she only ate uh, a few days ago. And you can see she's not exactly looking, uh, you know, slim. <laughs> She's got a good abdomen on her, but uh, no, she's taken that down. You can see, um, yeah, it's good to see at least she's eating well and uh, she's got a really good appetite. I think I might just leave this running for a minute. So that was actually quite a nice surprise. I genuinely was not expecting her to take down any food in this video because she said she only ate a few days ago. So that was quite nice to sort of see her eating, I guess. I'm um, gonna give her some water, make sure she's got plenty to drink, keep her hydrated, and then we'll take a look at the second one. I will try and feed that one as well. Whether it feeds or not, who knows. So this here is the second T Celadonia. This is Maya, and uh, I can't actually see it out and about, but I will put the macro lens on, see whether we can get some footage of this, and hopefully I will try and feed it. So this is the enclosure where Maya, my second Celadonia, lives, and you can actually see the hide that is starting to build, which is just here. This is an entrance down there. So uh, it is in the middle of constructing that, not as we speak, but it is sort of building a, a hide, which is pretty awesome. And uh, if I just turn it this way, you might be able to just see a bit of the spider. Here she is. This is the most recently molted one. And uh, so she has been eating some flies and things. As you can see, there's a few in there. But I'm gonna offer her a mealworm, see whether she will take it down. I have majorly crushed the head on that um, sort of several times, so that won't be posing any uh, threat to that spider at all. So uh, yeah, this is, as I say, this is the second one. And you can just see, even when they're so small, they already have the coloration. And she is absolutely tiny. I will, in a minute, uh, measure the molt of her so you can get an idea of just how small these spiders are. They are tiny and so, so delicate. Uh, it it's, can be quite scary when trying to, to sort of check on them. I don't think she's gonna take down that mealworm. I will leave it there for her for, uh, for a day. As I said, the head has been crushed on it and uh, it doesn't pose any kind of, any threat to her at all. So I don't mind leaving that in there. And as you would have seen, there are some small flies in there as well for her, which uh, she can take down. So yeah, this is Maya, and uh, she's gorgeous. I really do like these spiders. Uh, I know a lot of people would love the opportunity to have some of these, and maybe in the future, these will come down in price. So yeah, I'm very lucky to have two of these, considering how much these cost. I know there is a company, uh, which I will link in the description, if you're interested in buying one. Uh, they have them... Uh, last I saw they had them for sale uh, centimeter leg span for 600 euros so uh, if you have got the funds and you like you know your chance to, to buy one uh, there are places that do sell them but you are looking at five six hundred euros plus uh, for one of these um, I know there's a lot of people that are saying that they'll just wait for a bit and they'll come down in price uh, these spiders, I don't believe, at least not in the next uh, five, ten plus years, they won't ever be cheap, ever, I don't think. These will always be a very sought after, very expensive spider, I think. So, um, maybe they'll be more common in the hobby. Yeah, maybe like 10, 15 years um, or something like that. But if you're hoping like next year or in a couple of years they'll be, they'll be cheap, um, then I'm very sorry to disappoint you, but that just won't be the case, I don't think. So there you go everyone, that's a look at my two 
Tisa Adonias. They are absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, I can't stress that enough just how wonderful they are. And like I said, you know, when you have the malts and you know you're dealing with spiders like that are literally smaller than your thumb. Uh, it's very sort of scary in a way because you're actually so careful when you're dealing with them. And of course, not only that, especially with the with, with Maya, when she molted, she stayed in her hide for a few days after, of course, to harden up and things. And I was like so worried because I thought, what if, what if she died or something's happened? And you know, it's quite um, it's kind of quite stressful in a way opening these. Uh, but uh, they are doing really, really well, both of them. Uh, today is the 11th of June, so this video will be up on Thursday. Um, and yeah, like this is like the most recent update that I can do because I've got the video going up tomorrow and then I'm going to Wales for a few days to do some filming. So um, I went back for the weekend, so this video will already be up um, and I'll still be away for, you know, for a couple of days or whatever. So, but. Uh, yeah, awesome spiders. And for those of you that have been requesting an update on my tea Celadonia, firstly, I hope you've enjoyed it. Secondly, I hope I haven't sort of been talking too long. I do apologize, but I do enjoy talking about these. Um, it's an absolute privilege to be able to own these spiders. They are just, they're wonderful. So of course, a huge thank you from me for taking the time for watching my content. I do really appreciate it. If you would like to support me, you can do so by hitting the subscribe button, the bell icon, of course, liking and leaving a comment helps tremendously as well. And feel free to share this and any of my other videos with anyone who you think may enjoy it. Of course, if you are interested in supporting me even more and you are able to do so, I do have a Patreon, which you can find information to that in the description of this video. And also there'll be an annotation at the end in this corner up here. So a huge thank you from me, everyone. Take care and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye from me, everyone.